So very warm welcome to all faculties and delegates. Welcome to our series of UI ISOPAP educational webinar organized by Gorakhpur chapter of ISOPAP and Gorakhpur Obstetrics and Gynecological Society. Today we have a very different topic for discussion. Publication is your imprint on profession. We all cater to a huge population and do tremendous work. We have a huge data with us as compared to the Western population. Unfortunately, we Indian doctors are not friendly with publishing our data. Hence, we have so many guidelines, ACOG, RCOG, ASRM, etc., etc., but we lack proper Indian guidelines in most areas. I've heard Professor P.C. Mahapatra sir say, those who work don't publish and those who publish do not work. But then we are working and we are not publishing at all. So here comes the role of our visionary leader, Dr. Sadhna Gupta, ma'am. She has taken the end of year to spread awareness and interest in publications. She herself has several original research papers and publications to her credit, a dynamic viewer with innovative ideas, work, are expected to come forward with publishing every data they collect from their hard work. And of course, we have seniors to share their experiences and to guide them. Now, may Ma Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, help us in our Herculean task. Let us all join with folded hands and pray to Goddess Saraswati to ignite our lives with the light of knowledge. Simultaneously, let's drive the darkness of ignorance by lighting the lamp. Rubika? One second. Saraswati Vandana is always music to our ears and peaceful for our soul. Now, I would take the opportunity to invite Dr. Amrita Sarkari Jayapuriya. She is at present president of Gorakhpur Ops and Gaini Society. She is also secretary of Isopath Society Gorakhpur chapter. Minupo Society Gorupur chapter. She has organized okay. several workshops and conferences and got the best paper award in UCCOG 2020 midterm endocrine category. A warm welcome to Amrita Ji. And I request her to invite and introduce our chief guest, Professor Gangadhar Sam. Uh, thank you, dear Babita. Thank you for the wonderful words and giving me the most prestigious opportunity to welcome and introduce Sahu sir. Sahu sir uh, is the most simple and humble person I know of. He's our president, ISOPAB. And like uh, Madam Usha Sharma gave us the slogan, long live ISOPAB. But the way he is working and every day we find new chapters of ISOPAB coming up, we think that is it is going to be Immortal Isopab and Hail Isopab. So, sir is the retired professor and head of the department, VSS Medical College, Burla, Sambalpur. He's the dean, IMS presently, of S uh, uh, and SUM Hospital, Bhubaneswar, pro vice chancellor, SOA Deemed University, Bhubaneswar, and the founder president of Isopab, Burla, Sambalpur chapter. 
instrumental in opening isopop chapters in bhubaneswar bokaro jamshedpur and there are three chapters in pipeline i think they have all been inaugurated uh, in past three or four days and he has organized two national isopop conference and he is a learner teacher a wonderful orator a preacher of human values a writer philosopher and a team leader he is a gifted healer and an ordinary human being he, he says that he is surrounded by extraordinary friends and well wishers but i think he is the uh, one who is the most extraordinary amongst us his principle of life is not to be a defaulter and he dreams to be a ladder of success for others to climb up we welcome you sir on this platform and we would like to hear a few words of blessings from you so thank you amrita so it is really an emotional attachment of mine with gorakhpur chapter because i have discovered or rediscovered my disciple there in the form of amrita yes sir so greetings from aishopur greetings from odisha greetings from sambalpur and kurla jay jagannath blessings from lord jagannath so the innovative idea of sadhana madam in the form of a webinar as regards the research and publication is concerned is worthy so in this context i want to salute my mentor and teacher sindhu nandini madam since 1976 when i entered into the pg course she was after all of us regarding research publication everything in the rural medical that is bss medical college bugla where we are studying she had established a laboratory there in our department by herself to do research on tuberculosis and genital tuberculosis so what a great personality she is so today is research a part and parcel of our life and our education system that to in medical education i do not believe that those who work they cannot publish and those who publish they do not work this theory holds good actually busy people find time not the ideal ones those who are busy they can do any things at any time and any where so that is my principle so coming to gorakhpur chapter of isopar it is i can say from my heart as for it for activity it is it will come in the first second third chapters of isopor in the indian map so many many congratulation to the founder president and all the members who are so much enthusiastic and active for isopor now they are showing light to other chapters so you are an example for all of us i am also following some many things from your chapter so my salutation to each and every member and the founder president of yours coming to the isopor national isopor as amrita said national isopor slowly and steadily progressing i believe in slow and steady wins the race so gradually we are marching forward with the blessings and good wills of all the members and office bearers i am trying to reform i mean i heading the team of office bearers and members i'm trying to reform this chapter so that a system can be built for others 
it will be smoother to work on. So that is my principle. Therefore, I work silently, never make a voice, and you'll find in the long run how isoprop is changing. So that is due to blessings of Lord Jagannath and the goodwill of everybody. Regarding this topic, innovative topic, two lines only. So research was there, research is there, research will be there. When a man was nomadic, he was going doing research, how to find food, shelter, everything. When a baby is born, she or he doesn't do research, how to find his food. Similarly, gradually, she learns. So it is a gradually process, gradual process, and it will continue forever. So today's topics, selection of speakers, experts, are very, very much fantastic. So I, in which way I can praise Sadhana Madam and her team that how could she monitor and find out or screen and find out such beautiful, wise persons who will be befitting for each post. Starting from Babita, who is actually doing the most difficult job to bring all together into one platform, up to my Sobhagya and others. So thank you very much. You, Once sir. again, I wish Gorakku and the members best of luck, best wishes, long live Isopar, long live Isopar, long live Isopar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abhita. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So thank you so much for your kind words. Your words are always inspiring, as are your morning messages. We really enjoy them. So today I feel very honored and obliged to invite a lady committed to her profession and education. She has a passion to spread knowledge to the societies, a hardcore academician and a hardworking doctor, a simple human being with high standards. Simplicity is a virtue she adorns and leads the way forward to new and bright horizons. A very warm welcome to Sadhana Ma'am. Ma'am is co-chair, Suffolk NCD Committee, and President, North India Gynecologist. Kindly display CV. Thanks, okay. North India Gynecologist Forum. Ma'am has okay. held almost okay, every but... important post. Yes, ma'am. And of course, our Foxy Presidential Candidate Election 2023. We wish her all the very best. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. And Thank I you. request, ma'am, to invite and introduce a special guest, Dr. S. N. Tripathi, ma'am. Thank you, Babita. And uh, my regards to Dr. Gangadhar Sahu, Dr. S. N. Tripathi, Dr. Vinita Das, Dr. Rina Shevastav as a senior, and all uh, people who have, all faculty, esteemed faculty who is together, and all audience. So and I will say one or two words about it, which actually haunts me. So what is the research publication? Why well, say the people in India know everybody wants only clinical topic. And uh, my takeaway is always that uh, we have to make offbeat and classic films also. Uh, we cannot go for the like temporary film, which we forget in the next hour or the temporary song, which we like list. But we, we don't want to listen after one or two days. We don't remember. So there must be somebody. Uh, who has this uh, like um, courage to say and what is our vision to for this Yuva so far that we are celebrating the Independence Day Ajadi Ka Amrath Mahosav Hum Log Har Ghar Tiranga Lekin what is independence actually? Independence is about the something brave, something to pursue about which something is really passionate. You have seen one clinical case you have uh, encountered a few like uh, clinical situation and it is haunting you that you no, know, it is something there and I have to search. And uh, the, I think God also wishes it. Uh, he, he, God has many, many secrets. Lord Jagannath Ji has many, many secrets and all secrets are steering us that like search us. 
and that's why we have to search it it is a ongoing search of human being towards god towards perfection so that we can serve our fellow being we don't want to have that young independent india who is only the working like cramming the uh, rcog and the canada and the american college of obstetrician we want to have our own people who have the voice loud voice they can share they can argue they can discuss and they can put out the their own vision so that is independent india what we look forward and what i think our all mentors want to see they have struggled so far for the independent india because we want to have that independent india not the slave in the different form so it is about a little bit of the way and uh, it is a proud pleasure to welcome you all in the capacity of president gorakhpur chapter of isopar and it is a real proud and a dedicated privilege because ye jo chapter hai ye keval lord जगन्नाथ जी के कारण ही बना है बिकॉज ओनली इन आईसीओ जी टू जीरो वन नाइन बिफोर कोविड मैडम सैड अराउंड जस्ट इन ए कॉन्फ्रेंस भुवनेश्वर साधना यू मेक आईसो पार्क चैप्टर एंड विद ऑल कोविड एंड विद ऑल डिफिकल्टी वी कुड परस्यू वी कुड मेक चैप्टर वी कुड हैव अवर रजिस्ट्रेशन एवरीथिंग एंड वी कुड डू द मिड टर्म आईसो पार्क कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड नाउ यू आर आईसो पार्क सीरीज सो ये गुरु का आशीर्वाद है मैडम त्रिपाठी का आशीर्वाद है ये जय जगन्नाथ जी का आशीर्वाद है और हम हम हमेशा ये चाहेंगे कि हम उतने ही सेंट और सीरियनिटी से आईसो पार्क के लिए काम करें सो विद दिस बैकग्राउंड इट इज ए रियल रियल प्लेजर टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर एस एन त्रिपाठी एज ए स्पेशल गेस्ट बिकॉज शी इज द पर्सन हु हैज रियली इनकलकेटेड द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ रिसर्च इन हर स्टूडेंट इन ऑल ओवर द कंट्री एंड साथ ही डॉक्टर एस एन त्रिपाठी का स्लाइड फ्लैश करिएगा सी वी फ्लैश सो शी हैज बीन पास प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ गोरख आईसो पार्क चैप्टर नेशनल चैप्टर ऑफ आईसो पार्क शी हैज बीन आर्डेंट टीचर एंड हर वर्क ऑन जनरल Tuberculosis tuberculosis is known all over the country, so she is an what he say? She is an ardent researcher and a very very simple person. And we see the her students adore her, and that is the thing with her good teacher, with a teacher who give pressure to pupils, so they come out as a diamond. So, Madam Tripathi, we are really privileged to have you here, and uh, please say a few words about all the people who are here. so that we have the more and more paper in iso pub journal and more and more paper at the international level thank you, madam please very good evening to all of you sadhana i would told too much and uh, in what way i will appreciate my students that is the whole thing so let us start in a classical way dear president professor gangadhar sahu and my who is my dear student guest up on a very dear friend of mine vinita ji the president elect arup kumar maji who is also a very dear to me and dear sadhana you he, he will never stop in praising me amrita is here and babita is here and all the members of the organizing team the well known faculty members you have invited to from the india other participants and my dear students and grand students i am very grateful to gorakhpur icepop society for inviting me to this webinar with a topic which is very dear to my heart and i congratulate sadhana for selecting the topic on the educational webinar for juba iso parbians and functions so juba this is the first thing you are doing educating and the research means you are inducting them from the very beginning to do research work and babita was telling so everybody was telling those who work they only can publish a paper without working you cannot and while the world is sleeping the researchers work in the night that is the thing there is no path the path is made by working and leave your footprints on the sands of time as i jumped from one research project to another i felt that and everybody feels every researcher feels in the depths of winter 
I finally learned that within me, there lay an invisible summer in the midst of winter. So I have got the power to do research. That is the thing. Research is to see what everyone has seen and to think what no one else has thought. Anything you can do in any, any way you can do the research. The research is the other name of seeking the truth, Satyanu Sarano. It is running after the eternal truth and experimental omission and a deep thinking analysis of the results. It is nothing but the equilibrium of the mind, inquisitiveness of the mind and thirst for knowledge. This is the only thirst for knowledge. What you are telling Aruk, is not it thirst for knowledge? Otherwise, you will do no research. The academician of a person takes birth to research. Research gives birth to knowledge and then distribution, then publication. And it goes from person to person. It is always clothes. What is new today becomes old. And you yourself will, after 10 years, refute that and give something new. In the same subject, something new. It is never static. Research is never. Somebody tells, oh, you have done this research, and then you have again told that this is this thing. But time flows. Research also changes. I am introduced to research by Professor S. N. Tripathi in the era of mean and plus minus SD. Now it mostly depends on methodology to analyze the, the, um, the results. We now have very developed SPSS. Every time it is developing, just I will tell you only one example, how the research flows and how it changes. Adolescent research I'm doing for the last 40 years. And in 80s, 90% of the girls were using clothes. And in 1918, my result is 90% such doing sanitary towels. At that time, the girls were not knowing about childbirth, about HIV, and they were never touching the other sex. But nowadays, they know everything about HIV, how the childbirth occurs. This is 18 finding. So what I want to impress on you is your research, your research will give in different times, different publications and the youngsters present here. I am requesting them, even 10% of the delegates, if they will go for research and publish their articles, everything is available to them now. And the clinical materials in India is plenty. We may not have a very, very good laboratories, but clinical for clinical materials, no country has got clinical materials like us. So dear students, dear delegates, please do some research, fundamental research and contribute to the knowledge of the world. And India always contributes something to the uh, world. So let us, we isoparvians, we obstetrician and gynecologists publish something very, very good things to the world. And with my blessings to all of you, and I hope that at least 10 person will do the search. Jai Jagannath. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for inviting me to this August event. Thank you, madam. Thank you for your passionate address and hope it will transmit to many, many people. So thank you very much, Pavita. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are really impressed by your humble CV. Because being your student in SCB, I know the amount of work you have done and yeah, yeah. all the yeah. old positions you hold. So but to then, see. <laughs> and, uh, the, so much interest in research. Huh? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, but and I will sad, always sad, and sadhana, sadhana, I met on a research platform only. And it was a love in first sight. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But I will always remember you as a dedicated teacher with a sweet smile and a humble human being that you are. Now, it's my pride and privilege to invite our guest of honor, Professor Vinita Das. Madam is ex-dean and HOD of Sankaini KG Medical University, Lucknow. Her field of interest being reproductive health, 
infertility, high-risk pregnancy, and medical education. Madam is Vice President-elect ISAPAR 2223, Founder-President of Lucknow Chapter of ISAPAR. IMSP Fellow, High-Risk Pregnancy USA. She's also past president of Lucknow Ops and Gynae Society. She's initiator of PPIUCD in UP, which got upscaled in India. Madam has received various international fellowships, FIGO and FOGSI awards, received Dipsy National Award for GTM guidelines. She has worked with MOH, Government of India, and team leader for various national guidelines for labor and delivery. She has more than 150 publications in national and international journals and 14 book chapters. Four PI in around 80 research products. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you, Babita. And my thanks to Dr. Sadna for inviting me on this forum. My greetings to my all the seniors, Dr. Tripathi, President Isopav, Dr. Gangadhar Sahu, President-elect, Dr. Maji, all my dear friends, Dr. Reena, my colleague, and all my juniors. So it's a... Uh, Isopav is growing day by day, there's no doubt. We all members of the ISOPAP, our effort is to increase the membership and opening the new chapters all over the country so that we all can show to the society that ISOPAP is not a sleeping society, but it is a vibrant society and uh, growing day by day. Uh, my senior colleagues have spoken a lot about the research and publication. I would like just to highlight few sentences. A lot of people are doing research and good research, no doubt. But there is some hesitancy in our younger colleague for writing and publishing. So this, is, this seminar will give them a boost because writing is an art. And publication, learning the nitty gritties of publication, how your research can be written and published in reputed journals, our own journal of ISOPAP. So that is an art. Writing is an art. So I'm sure our um, speakers will uh, give some insight to our younger colleagues, our own colleagues, how to write our research, because that is very important. Be besides doing research, until unless we publish it, we show to the society and to our scientific society that yes, the work is being done and it is a good work. So until unless we publish, it will not be known to all over the country and all over the world. So this topic which has been chosen by Dr. Sadhana and her team is really a very befitting in, to, in today's scenario for our youngsters and all the colleagues. Thank you so much for giving me the, this opportunity to be the part of this webinar. And I'm really very interested in listening uh, to our colleagues how to write or how to publish the research work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind words. They are always inspiring for us, and uh, I'm sure the youngsters will be uh, inspired and they'll do more of research work and publications. So now, without much ado, let us quickly move towards our scientific session. Our first keynote topic is crossing the barriers to publications. We have a wonderful speaker, Dr. Smriti Agarwal, and our experts for this session, I, I hope Dr. Hiralal Konar has joined, sir, and called me earlier. Tulika? So our experts for this session are Dr. Hiralal Konar, Editor-in-Chief. Sir is Foxy Representative, AOFOG 2018-19, Member Oncology Committee of FOG, Chairman Indian College of Ops and Gynae, National Editor, Journal Ops and Gynae India, Vice President National ISOPAP, Editor-in-Chief of Journal ISOPAP 2016-22, to 
सर इज फेलो एंड मेंबर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ए आई सी सी आर सी ओ जी ऑथर ऑफ टेक्सट बुक्स ऑब्सटेटिक्स गायनेकोलॉजी क्लिनिकल ऑब्स एंड गायनी फॉर पी जीज प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ऑब्स एंड गायनी के पी सी मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल कोलकाता ए वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू सर नेक्स्ट वी हैव डॉक्टर आभा सिंह शी इज डिरेक्टर प्रोफेसर एंड एक्स हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ऑब्स एंड गायनी लेडी हार्ड इन मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड एस एस के हॉस्पिटल न्यू दिल्ली she has held several positions as ex president aogd ex president nachi chairperson of dsc pcp and d dt organized the cg saraya cme chairperson safe motherhood committee vice president delhi gynecological of endoscopic society member of executive executive committee of narchi and isopark recipient of several awards her field of interest being high risk pregnancy laparoscopy infertility oncology and she has delivered several orations and awarded been awarded prizes in conferences a very warm welcome to you ma'am next we have a very interesting expert i really admire her dr ruma sinha senior consultant gynecologist laparoscopy and robotic surgeon apollo health city hyderabad founder president association of gynecological robotic surgeons pioneer robotic surgeon in india in 2012 an ordinary professor aherf and conjoint associate professor macquarie university sydney australia her areas of interest be minimally access gynecological surgery laparoscopy hysteroscopy and robotic surgery non descent vaginal hysterectomy she had conducted a very good workshop in ndbs in gorakhpur and we all started doing ndbs after that and urogynecology and pelvic reconstructive surgery a very warm welcome to you ma'am i would also like to introduce our speaker dr smriti agarwal kindly display her cv she is professor and head affiliation institute department of ops and gynae dr rm lims lucknow awarded professor dhavendra kumar young investigator gold medal by kgmu lucknow joint organizing secretary aicog 2020 at lucknow and joint secretary at lucknow ops and gynae society her areas of interest be fetal medicine and reproductive medicine she has more than 50 publications in reputed international and national journals and author of many chapters and review articles a very warm welcome to our speaker dr smriti agarwal and uh, after the talk i would uh, request our experts to give their individual opinion on this topic and also their opinion about research and publications in general and how we youngsters should go forward in publishing our data in national and international journals we have been lacking in it till now but then we are very inspired today so thank you so much now i would uh, request our speaker to go forward with a talk and then our experts will do the job thank you so much dr babita uh, are my slides visible yes ma'am yes ma visible so, uh, yes ma'am um, a very very good evening to all the respected uh, seniors experts my dear friends it's my honor to be here and thank you sadna ma'am for giving me this opportunity it's a very uh, relevant topic in uh, the current scenario because we also feel that as young researchers we are doing research but maybe the publication part is lacking because there are a lot of barriers created by us only and we need to actually overcome them so we know why we do we do research we do research because a lot of times when we are doing clinical practice we come across certain situations where uh, we wonder why these things are associated with these with with this with each other we are probably interested in a particular field for example some are interested in pcos some in aub some in diabetes some in hypertension it could be just plain curiosity and of course in academic institutes promotion getting a promotion is one of the very very big reasons why research projects and publications are done and some also have a basic instinct to just do research as dr tripathi was telling us so doing a research is a completely different thing and publishing is a completely different thing in academic institutes we face this dictum either you publish or you perish and there is forever a pressure 
to uh, make do as many publications as possible to disseminate the research findings. Of course, needless to say that there is a high prestige and recognition bestowed upon research. And a lot of us are quite motivated by the uh, recognition it gives. So if things are so good, then what are the challenges? That is because all aim to publish in high impact journals. However, the rejection rate in most of the journals is more than 80%. And this rejection happens because of the flawed study, because of uh, the lack of broad interest in the field, and sometimes the assessors are critical too. And of course, there are a lot of uh, people who do the research, they do not know how to write and what to write, limited time because of the clinical department. There is of course fear of rejection. You feel unworthy as a researcher because even if you have done the research very well, you might suddenly feel that you are subjected to scrutiny of others and others will probably find out faults in what you have done. And that is one of the reasons why people do not want to publish or are scared of publication. There is uh, probably lack of quality and lack of expertise as well. I came across a very interesting article which was published in 2017, which is a DIZIPAM study where uh, it looked at the barriers in publication. And there were more than 1000 respondents and they found that around 80% of them, they did not have time to write. And that is why they were not publishing. Some of them had limited skills in English or in writing. And most of them would readily accept any kind of a technical support, either in uh, English re-editing, critical re-editing or formatting, etc. But as every task has a solution, so is this clinical publication. But for this, we need a good preparation. So when we have made up our mind that we now want to publish, the first and foremost thing we need to do is identify the author or authors. Have a very good preparation. Find, agree who is to be the first author, what would be the sequence of the author, and also uh, agree the delegation of the work. Who is going to make the first draft? Who is going to do the analysis of the results? And who is going to do a critical uh, review of the research paper in the entire team? Look at the target audience. For example, if you are doing an epidemiological study, looking at the prevalence of gestational diabetes, then try to think whether you want this to be published in a general uh, practitioner's journal, or you want it to be published in a specialist journal, or you want it to be published in a PSM journal, because obviously the audience is going to be different. Then select an appropriate journal. When you have selected appropriate journal, go on to the journal website, read its philosophy, because then you will have an idea uh, what kind of articles it accepts. And a very good thing is, if you have chosen that journal, uh, take out a good article published in that journal and take a print out of it. Keep it with you. When you look at that article, you will have an idea what is the formatting of writing and how the articles published in that journal are written. Read the editor's guideline for authors thoroughly because that will give you a clue as to how to start writing. Now, like all good movies have trailers, similarly, all good research papers have abstracts. So first and foremost thing to do when you start writing a paper is write an abstract because abstract is small, it is accurate, concise, and it contains all the major findings. Abstract is a standalone. It follows the same pattern as uh, the research article, which is introduction methods, research and conclusion. Maximum 250 words, so it hardly takes any time to write that. And do not use any unnecessary words or phrases. So when you have made up a mind, first you begin with writing an abstract. The problems usually what the researchers face is, sometimes the data in abstract is does not tally with the data in the article. And that is where the problems start coming. So be careful about that. But when you have written the abstract, the next thing to do is choose, an, choose a title. The title has to be catchy, yet informative. These are some of the very uh, important tips how to choose an article, how to choose a title. Do not use any abbreviations or symbols. Maximum 15 words should be enough for a title. A lot of us have the habit of beginning a title with a study of some drug, study of some procedure, study of some intervention. It, should, it is not a good idea to use a study of or analysis of in the title and uh, be specific about the title. The, uh, the title should give us a very positive impression and stimulate the readers. Some titles can have, uh, you know, uh, in, they can be in the form of a question. 
However, rarely do the academic titles have an exclamation mark. Then, uh, what should be the words used in the title? You should use a current nomenclature. For example, if you're doing a study on pregnant women, then use the same word in the title. Do not use antenatal women. For example, if you're doing on adolescent girls, then the same nomenclature should be there in the title instead of writing young girls. So that we have to be careful. Identify the variables, both dependent and independent. Suggest a relationship between the variables and the major hypothesis. Then it is very important to have a correct grammar and capitalization with all first words and last words, including the first word of a subtitle. All nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, etc. They should also be capitalized. I would like to give you some examples. For example, saying that evaluation of blood sugar control in diabetic pregnant women is actually not a good idea, not a good title. You should rather be writing estimation of blood sugar levels in women with gestational diabetes. Similarly, if you look at a study to investigate the safety and efficacy of hydroxychloroquine in subjects who are infected with COVID-19 during the pandemic, is actually too wordy and long. <clears throat> can easily be concise to safety and efficacy of hydroxychloroquine during the COVID-19 pandemic. So when we have to write title, there are just five basic steps which have to be followed. First, you write down the major hypothesis of your article. As I said, use the same nomenclature which you are going to use in your manuscript. Break down the title into P-I-C-O-T. P stands for patients, I for intervention, C for comparison, O for outcome and T stands for time. So try to see if you can fit the title into these pi chord. Frame the phrases that give a positive impression and then sit with your team, organize and reorganize the title and you, I'm very sure that you would come out with a very interesting one. For example, if the title is comparative study of two new hypoglycemic drugs, it's very vague. You can actually say comparison of hypoglycemic effects of drug A and drug B in women with gestational diabetes. So in this, P stands, P is the population, which is women with gestational diabetes. I is the intervention, which is the drug taken. Comparison is between drug A and B, and the outcome is hypoglycemic effect. So if we follow this picot, we will not miss anything in the title. Be as specific as possible. For example, if you say, how do artificial sweeteners affect people? That is very vague. Rather, you can say, how does aspartame affect postmenopausal women who suffer from migraines? Another one, don't put any questions in the titles which can be simply answered by yes or no. Does owning a pet improve quality of life for older people? This can be answered by yes or no. Rather, have in what ways does owning a pet improve the quality of life for older people? So once your abstract has been written, the title has been finalized, start writing the paper. Simple rules, plan the structure and outline whatever the author guidelines you have taken. Do not make it too complicated, write in very, very simple language. Do not use too much of academic jargon. Write down whatever you want. Seek trusted opinion from your friends or colleagues or co-authors. Revise the draft and keep repeating the steps till your draft is ready. So uh, now we come on to the basic structure of a paper. So a paper would have IMRAD, uh, which usually follows the IMRAD, which is I stands for introduction, M for methods, R for results, and D for discussion. Introduction, whenever we begin a book, if the first page is boring, we, we tend to drop the book. So be, be very brief, be clear, and be to the point. Make sure that you write introduction in the present tense, like we aim to do this study. So it's very important that introduction is written in present tense. So any introduction usually has three distinct paragraphs. Number one will always have first paragraph as the background of what is uh, known or the definitions, any important guideline which say something about it. The second paragraph should be what are the gaps or the lacunae in the knowledge which is already existing, which is making you do a res further research on that subject. And the last paragraph should be on what is your hypothesis and what would be your aim to when you do this research. So introduction should be very brief. We should be careful about the language. Never use the passive voice. It's always written in innumerable articles that use active voice. 
uh, the papers written in the active voice they are read better they are sound better and they are accepted also better do not use in many wordy sentences like in spite of the fact that rather just use though do not write due to the fact that just write because with the possible exception of rather you should write just except in only a small number of cases really so the idea is do not make the sentence too wordy if there is just one word which can replace the phrase do that divide your paper into logical segments which we will come to it make it a very easy read and try to use the gender neutral language plural that is we we aim to do we found so that way it is more uh, it is better so now we have written the abstract we have chosen the title we have also written the introduction now let's come to materials and methods now materials and methods are written in past tense because you have done the study already write what you did in chronological order how you started and what happened and then if the patients were lost to follow up or what what exactly happened write that in chronological order then you should have subheadings like study design how was this uh, study planned what kind of a study it was then talk about the study participants including the inclusion and exclusion criteria then describe the procedure or the intervention whatever you have done in the study and then define the outcomes outcomes can be as many as you want to study primary outcomes secondary outcomes whatever but it is important that you put it down that these were the outcomes which were uh, planned for uh, research in materials and methodology very important to include these two things number one approval from the ethics committee wherever the ethics committee was from your institute from your hospital regulatory board whichever the second thing would be you have to write that an informed consent was taken from the participants if the study involves the uh, participants so these two things are extremely important in materials and methodology only also write about how you plan to do data analysis how you calculated the sample size what was the power of the study which you chose it could be 80% 90% depending upon however you want to conduct the study what tests you have used for analysis details of the software as the party ma'am was just saying the spss software is very commonly used now and p value so these things should be mentioned in the materials and methodology section only so now we come to the most important which is results now you have to display your results as beautifully as possible make it a structured result for example if you want to study the maternal and perinatal outcome of certain disease or certain medical disorder use the subheadings first thing should always be demographic data of the participants whatever kind of study is because you need to describe the people whom you have enrolled and then flow of participants diagram how those women were enrolled how many were included excluded how many were followed up etc there are uh, reporting guidelines like consort or prisma which are available and which tell you the flow how you need to write in the uh, research paper and they are easily available on the internet so as i said uh, write the positive findings first of course write them in chronological order if you are doing maternal and perinatal outcome for example first you write about the demography of the participants then if the maternal outcome you are studying then club them as the antenatal uh, risk factors or antenatal observations then you can talk about mode of delivery separately and then the perinatal outcome so that way you are able to club the results as per the outcomes if the numbers are small for example you have found uh maybe just five women finding something then it is better that you write only actual numbers do not write percentages if the numbers are small because those percentages are extremely misleading table should be stand alone if you're writing something about the table then let the table uh, speak about that there's no point in writing in text also what you are already showing in the table or in the uh, figures so after you're done with the results as i said make the results as simple and beautiful and clear as possible then you have to come to discussion now discussion of course is the most difficult to write so but if you follow a structured pattern in discussion also it rather becomes very easy a first paragraph of discussion should always be what you began to do and what you found 
whatever. For example, if you found that uh, um, in cholestasis of pregnancy, also deoxycholic acid was found to be beneficial in so many. So maybe you began to find, you began your study with what is the efficacy of uh, arso deoxycholic acid? So whatever you found, the major finding, safety or efficacy, just write that in the first paragraph, very explicitly. The next paragraph should be that you compare your results, what you found with the studies already existing in literature, whether the studies, they also say the same thing or whether they refute what you found. And if there is a if the studies refute, then why do you think there is a difference in your outcome and their outcome? What do you think led to that outcome that way? So all those things have to be discussed in the second paragraph. The third paragraph, write about the strength of your study and the limitations of your study. It's always a good idea to spell out your own strengths and spell out your own limitations and do not uh, allow others to tell you that this was missing in your study. Because if you're honest with yourself, if you're honest with your research, there are very high chances that your paper will be published. And the last paragraph in discussion should be implications of finding for future research or practice or for the policymakers if you want to say something. So discussion may sound very difficult, but if you just structure it in three major paragraphs, first, what you began to do and what you found, comparisons, strengths, limitations, and then what are the implications of that study? So that would do. Next, we come to the references. References have to be as per the journal format, whatever kind of references they want, whether Vancouver or APO format, et cetera. But stick to the latest end. If, however, a study has been done even 40 years back, but it is extremely relevant to your paper, then it is a very good idea to cite that. But otherwise, stick to the latest references. Now, after you have done the entire paperwork, now you have, to, in the end, you have to choose the right keywords. Keywords are usually the mesh words which are used for indexing or retrieval. They can be simple words or short phrases. Uh, find out in your study what are the three to 10 main identifiers. And try not to use the same words which are there in title because title would anyway be indexed. So if you have different keywords, there would be more chances of retrieval of your paper when anybody is looking for a similar thing. And arrange the keywords in an alphabetical order. Then in the end, when you have done all this, prepare a title page where you just, you just need to write the title and the correct affiliations of the authors in the sequence, whatever you have decided. Details of the corresponding author should be there and keywords. So now has come, now your paper is completely ready for submission. And this is the checklist which you must have to see whether you have done everything which is possible because you can't go back on after your submission and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot to add this. It has to be completely perfect right at the first time of submission. So proofread your article well. Again, read the guidelines of authors after you have written the article also, just to see whether you have missed anything. Format your headings and figures. Write the legends. Check the referencing. See if they are correct. Gain the copyright permissions if you need. Prepare the title page. Prepare the keywords. And submit according to the instructions and on one journal only. Be patient, the response will definitely come. And it is fine, completely fine if they suggest some kind of revisions. Make whatever is advised and resubmit it. And there are very, very high chances that your paper would be published. Of course, one last slide on the ethics of publication. Be very careful about fabrication of data. Do not do it. Falsification of data. Avoid plagiarism. If there is a particular thing which interests you a lot and you want to quote that in your paper. It's always a good idea that you take notes, you paraphrase that sentence and cite it. If you cite it appropriately, then you will not be, uh, you will not face plagiarism. And of course, avoid duplicate publications. Just be honest with whatever you have done. So um, that is all from my side. I would just like to say that seeing one's name in a scientific manuscript that has crossed peer review is the most rewarding not just for personal pride, but also because you're able to contribute to the scientific knowledge to a large extent. And earlier you start writing, the perfect your composition will become. The problem with us is we do not know how to start. And if we start, we do not know how to finish. So I attended one workshop and it was very interesting to note that identify what is the most constructive period of your day. 
maybe you're more alert in the mornings or afternoons or night. Some people also write in the midnight. So identify what is your most constructive period and just look at the results, the analysis which you have done and start writing whatever comes to your mind. Do not be bothered about the grammar, the language or the flow. Just start writing. And once you start writing, you'll be surprised how far you will go just by starting. So uh, I again would like to thank you all. That is all from my side. So I hope, um, you know, uh, this simple tips would definitely help the young researchers um, to go ahead with this publication because it may sound very daunty, but it is not difficult at all. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Smriti, for such a wonderful talk. It was really very informative and uh, an eye-opener for people like us. Now, I would request our experts to give their own comments. Dr. Hira Lal Konar, sir, sir, kindly uh, give your own views and opinion regarding this topic. <clears throat> thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, the organizers, uh, Juba Isopart Educational Webinar. Uh, Dr. Sadhana Gupta from Grokpur and her team that uh, the other workers like Amrita, that of uh, Tulika, IOC, there are many from the Society of Grokpur, Isopar, that they have organized the scientific part. I am very happy to join this. I was a bit late because of some technical difficulty, but I have heard uh, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Agarwal, the presentation, I believe this is uh, essential, very much important to know uh, before any publication for our juniors and that especially the postgraduates that they are looking for their publication as rightly the topic has been discussed as the professional imprint. Once we have got some research work published, definitely it is a professional imprint for our subsequent career. Uh, whatever has been discussed to my mind <clears throat> Most of us working um, in hospitals, especially in our country, it is a clinical research. We are not the uh, clinical scientist, but again then we are <clears throat> in clinical research. Uh, most of us involved and we do scientific publications. Sure. Keeping in mind, my feeling is this, that following the advice that uh, has already been given by Dr. Agarwal, that uh, we must have that a uh, good amount of clinical resources in the institute of the hospital or the teaching institute that you are working. These days, uh, the job has been much uh, supported but simplified by the institute itself with the help of the NMC that we have got the different um, the, uh, areas that, of, that are being cleared, like your ethics committee, that of the uh, designing system, that of the statistical analysis. Institute has got many supportive systems. So that part is over, but candidates should know that besides that, what has been discussed, that of the understanding of the knowledge, the subject to design and to go for the research and sufficient understanding in the current literature regarding the topic when you are selecting the topic, meaning that whenever the article is submitted to any journal, uh, obviously journal, the um, assessor, the reviewer needs to know what is new in the topic. Is there is anything that adds to our knowledge that gets the importance. Otherwise, if there is the repetition of the same information and knowledge, probably the, uh, the interest over the article is much less. Similarly, whether it is a, what type of study is a prospective study or that is a retrospective study. This way it has got many areas that uh, gets priority of the, selects the priority of the article for um, selection and that of the publication. And my feeling also that uh, appropriate journal and that of this uh, going through the instructions of the journal that how the author should prepare the article for this uh, publication and obviously goes uh, I should not say there is a, a difficult area sometimes these uh, reviewers bias often there is an another difficult area whatever has been said I have faced such problems different of the different areas reviewer may have got some ideas often that needs to be clearly clarified with, that may take some time to overcome the obstacles so that the journal gets the light of the day. I think uh, these are the uh, essential uh, uh, tips and that can help this worker to go for this publication work and, the, and the, get the research work published. 
I believe it is a good uh, webinar, good discussion that Dr. Mishra has done. If anything, more queries, then maybe that we can answer later on. Thank you so much, sir, for such uh, kind words. It is really very informative. I would also request Dr. Abha Singh, ma'am, to give her opinion. Dr. Abha Singh. First of all, I want to thank Abha Singh. Yeah, I'm speaking. I hope yes, you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Sadhana uh, for giving the opportunity to attend this and um, reviving Isopark because Isopark it gets revived for some years and it goes down to a sleeping mode. So, uh, I hope it will regain this momentum and uh, continue uh, this meetings and uh, have more and more webinars which are of interest to everybody and different from the ones which are being held. This is another different sort of a webinar where uh, this publication has been highlighted. And you all know uh, we are working in, I say, government hospitals. The load of patients have a very uh, wide variety of clinical material, but again, the publication is deficient. Sometimes we think, that okay, this uh, is not a real case. I should be Sometimes the case is not really investigated. You don't have proper investigations to project. So all those uh, hindrances are there. But say if you want to see in the uh, literature, there are just two or three cases which have been published. And you say, say that yes, you have also done so many cases, but publication there are publications. So we should encourage a younger lot at least publish cases uh, as uh, they see and um, they should read about them and publish them. Uh, one thing is financial support. We are not getting any. We are doing this, but a number of times the PG thesis are also not really substantial and. Uh, the motivation for this, these younger lot is in the career documentation because if you don't have so many papers, you will not be eligible for promotion. So all those things uh, are forcing the younger lot. Again, the research quality has to improve and the publication quality. Another thing is in open access journals uh, these days, you have to be very uh, cautious that the fake journals uh, which have come up uh, they're just uh, taking so much money and publishing it on the papers, which do not have that value. Say so they're not indexed. So you have to see in which journal you are uh, publishing it. The PubMed index or the other scope index. So all those things have to be seen whether the journal is suitable or not. And then you should publish the relevant, uh, uh, say, journal. Say if I want to publish some OBS gynae thing, whether it has to be published in OBS gynae or you want to publish in some other journal, so that you have to be very sure about it. And uh, um, so this is the uh, main thing which I wanted to say. Dr. Konar has uh, said a number of things and uh, Dr. Smith has uh, very nicely told how to publish a paper. Actually, she has told us how to do a thesis also in the same thing. How to do uh, the introduction, the ethical committee, all those things she has started from the very beginning. So it is the same thing as you do a project or you do a thesis or any research has to undergo all those formalities. You have to go through the uh, ethical institution. So that gives you a weightage that your paper was. It has gone through the test from your various uh, heads who are part of the uh, committee. Then another thing is, uh, the uh, problems which we face and the only problem which I think uh, is uh, lack of time, lack of interest. So th uh, this we have to again think about and how to follow that. And uh, another thing, uh, say if there is rejection of the paper, again people get um, demotivated. They say uh, earlier we used to have to print the paper and send it. So what happens? Uh, it used to go in one month's time, three months' time, four months' time. Uh, the review was done, and then 
people get rejections some people will say okay you have to make these corrections and that took a very long procedure and finally people lost interest in doing the publication but with uh, more internet facilities available and more faster uh, uh, methods of uh, reviewing your article it has been eased out so you should be more motivated for uh, publishing your research work and any paper say you have done this data akrita so say when i did the it was nearly the uh, earlier ones and i said okay publish it but again we did try to publish it but again some problems were there then i made a video that video got viral everywhere and i see the, that uh, in every book i see that the books are there and again i can't see it in my publication anywhere so that is the problem with us so we have to be really upfront and we should go uh, to more uh, depth and uh, be more courageous to publish our rejection may be there but again we have to uh, face that challenge and publish it so very rightly uh, dr smriti has uh, highlighted how to write a paper and um, uh, what are the obstacles and what are the small small things which you should keep in mind when you are writing a paper thank you thank you so much ma'am for such useful tips we would also like to listen to dr ruma sinha her opinion regarding this topic dr ruma sinha dr thanks babita uh, i must first start by saying Smriti, it was a fabulous presentation. You have just you have hit the nail at the right point, and I have one request to the I sort of, um, uh, main body as well as to Gorakhpur chapter, ma'am. We should make this lecture available on the website for young uh, delegates to listen again and again when they have they can revisit and understand how to write a paper. I think uh, the rest has already been said by Dr. Abha and Dr. Hiralal, so I will not take any more time. We are running short. But Smriti, you have done a fabulous job. I think it could be a kind of no, landmark think, uh, discussion I that you made. But any new person who wants to write, you have made it so point wise. You have made that, it so uh, point wise. I may use your lecture to teach my students as well. So it's perfect. It was so nice. Thank you so much, and thank you everybody for involving me. I I cannot. I have no words to say. Very good. Thank you, ma'am, for your encouraging words. Indeed, it was a very good lecture. now without wasting much time i would like to hand over this virtual dais to my co convener dr ritu shrivastava to conduct the second scientific session dr ritu yeah thank you dr babita good evening mm -hmm. now let's quickly move on to our next session it contains three talks our experts are pioneers like dr arup kumar maji sir may i have his cv yeah sir is professor in shanti niketan medical college he is scientific committee co chairperson icog 2023 calcutta sir is former professor and head obg rg car medical college sir has been vice president isopa he is the president national president elect isopa and has various uh, publications and many uh, chapters also he has written and uh, we welcome you sir Now next is Dr. Meena Samant, ma'am. Madam is senior consultant, HOD, Kurji Holy Family Hospital, Patna. She is secretary general, National ISOPA. She is chairperson, Foxy Clinical Research. She has held many posts in Obscurity and has organized many conferences and has multiple publications. A warm welcome to you, ma'am. Then Dr. Shashi Kala Kola. Madam is consultant of Skyni Rainbow Hospital and Vivek Hospital, Begum Pet. She is vice president ISOPA. She has held many posts in ISOPA and of Skyni Society and has received training in robotic surgery in Italy. Then we have Dr. Lavina Chobe, ma'am. Madam is professor, Department of of Skyni, IMS BHU. She is president of Varanasi of Skyni Society. she has held many important post in varanasi of gyni society she has plenty of publications and more than 100 lectures given in conferences scientific and academic meets 
we welcome you ma'am then uh, uh, this contains three uh, uh, talks the first talk is by the first talk is enigma of randomized controlled trial trial by speaker is dr shashwati sarkar se dr shashwati is senior consultant mohak prayagraj she has received post doctoral fellowship in reproductive medicine and surgery from singapore hospital she has many publications in on fertility and reproduction she has many presentations and publications and awards in her name ma'am i request you to begin your talk please very good evening to everyone uh, let me first uh, share my screen Uh, is my uh, screen visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, very good evening yes, to everyone. And it's my proud privilege to be speaking on this uh, lovely topic given to me by Dr. Sadhna, ma'am, Enigma of Randomized Control Trials. And I'm especially uh, thankful because uh, I shall be speaking in front of my professor, Professor Abha Singh from my medical college. So, it's a proud privilege for me as well. Now, why do we consider randomized control trials as an enigma? because uh, every one of us, uh, especially the private practitioners are very scared of uh, conducting randomized control trials. So at the max, we end up with only reporting our case reports or case series. So if you look at the uh, pyramid here, here we have all the various types of studies which have been arranged in the form of a pyramid on the basis of their quality of evidence. And we find that the observational studies, they are at the lower most part of the pyramid because they have the poorest quality of evidence. This is then followed by the experimental studies, that is the control studies, uh, the randomized and the non-randomized ones. And they are considered better because they have a better quality of evidence. And towards the peak, we have the meta-analysis and the systemic reviews because they go through a secondary analysis as well that is critical appraisal that's why they are considered the best and have the best quality of evidence so today we will be uh, talking about randomized control trials and how they are done so what is randomized control trial randomized control trial is a trial in which subjects are randomly assigned into one of the two groups the two groups are experimental groups which will be receiving the intervention which can be in the form of a new drug or some new treatment modality, maybe some new devices being tested upon them. And the other group is the control group or the comparison group, which will be receiving an alternative treatment or the conventional or the old treatment that is already being given to the patients. Now, these two groups are followed up over a certain period of time, and then the results are analyzed. And we then see whether there is any difference or whether there is the difference is significant enough to be using this intervention later on in our medical practice. So RCT is actually an ideal methodology to determine whether a cause-effect relationship exists between the intervention and the outcome. And of course, the re results are more reliable and more credible as compared to the observational studies like case reports. And that's the reason why we consider it as the most valid method for assessing the benefits and harms of healthcare interventions. But then Every research has its potential errors and even RCT has its potential errors. So the errors could be because of some bias or could be because of some confounding factor or could be maybe because of some chance uh, uh, happening. So what is bias? Bias is basically the deviation of results from the truth. Now, there can be two forms of bias. One is the selection bias. That is, we selected the patients wrongly. Second is the observer or the information bias. That is, the collection of information is being done wrongly. And how do we eliminate this bias? We can do this with the help of blinding. And I'll be talking about blinding in one of the subsequent slides. So let's go to the second error. The second error is because of a confounding factor. Now, this is some factor which is associated both with the outcome as well as with the intervention. So to look at the example, suppose we are actually looking at the effect of alcohol on lung cancer. So alcohol use would be the exposure and lung cancer would be the outcome. Now, if some of our patients are also smoking, then smoking would be a confounding factor because we know already that smoking can also lead to lung cancer. So we won't know whether the lung cancer is because of alcohol or because of smoking. So in the initial stage of planning, we must remove these patients from the study group because then they will be confounding our research project. So how do we deal with this? This is done at the time of designing the project and also at the time of analysis. 
Then third error could be just a chance. That is, it is a random error which appears to have an association between the intervention and the outcome. Now, that's the reason why we consider case reports as very poor, uh, uh, poor type of uh, studies, observational studies. Why? Because the sample size is very small. So how to do away with this? We, if we have a large sample size, then we can have a better study. Now coming to blinding. Now blinding is a crucial method to reduce bias. And how is it uh, defined? It is defined as withholding information from all the participants of the study about the consigned interventions and which is likely to prejudice the people who are involved in the trial so that the knowledge does not influence them. Now, what is the difference between masking versus blinding? Sometimes we find that papers use the term masking. Now masking and blinding are the same term. We can use them interchangeably, but then blinding is a more universal term and uh, is being used more wor worldwide. On the contrary, the ophthalmology people rather prefer to use the term masking because for them, blinding is also an outcome. So they generally like to use the term masking instead of blinding. So coming to the hierarchy of blinding. So when we are performing a study, we find that there are four groups of people involved in the study. First, the participants who will be receiving the intervention. Second, the clinician or the surgeon who will be giving the intervention. Then, of course, the data collectors. And lastly, the statisticians or the data analysts. So we can have a single blind study where either the participant or the clinician is blinded. Second, we can have the double blind where the participants and clinicians both are blinded. Triple blind, where the participants, clinician, and the data collectors, all the three are blinded. And of course, the quadruple blind, where all the four are blinded. Now, coming to the features of a well-designed randomized control trial. First of all, select sufficient number of pa uh, patients, because this will allow to have a high probability of detecting a clinically important difference between the treatment if a difference actually exists. Second, randomization. Now, effective randomization of the subjects is important because we need to eliminate the selection bias and also minimize the confounding factors. Then both the groups should be treated absolutely identically. That is the study group and the control group. There should not be any difference on any basis. They should be uniform in all aspects, of course, except for the intervention that is being tested. So blinding of patients and investigators is important. Investigator who is going to assess the outcome should also be blinded to treatment allocation. And lastly, remember what was the research question in the beginning of the research project. Analysis should focus on this research question and you should not lose focus while you are doing the trial. So the design will go through these following steps. First of all, you select the population. This population will be the reference population or the target population which you are going to study. Now it's impossible to study the entire population. So what you do, you select a sample from this population and this sample will be the experimental or the study sample. Then you make the necessary exclusions. Exclusions means those people who are not eligible for the study. And then there will be people who will not give consent for the study. So they are to be removed from the study and whatever number of people you are left with who have given consent for the study, you will then randomize them, which is the most important step in the randomized control trial. Then you will divide them into two groups, the control group and the study group. And then you will perform the intervention. After that, you follow them up and then you will assess the outcome. So getting started, that is first step is to draw up a protocol. So first you choose your research subject, your subject which you are interested in. Then you formulate a hypothesis which you want to test. Now, what is a hypothesis? Hypothesis basically is a supposition which is based on limited evidence. And this is your starting point. This will be the point from where you will start the test and then you will check whether your hypothesis is correct or wrong. Then you will make a protocol from the initial hypothesis. This protocol should have all these topics, the aims and objectives, then the questions which need to be answered, the criteria selection of the study groups and the control groups Groups, the interventions that you will be applying, and of course, the standardization of the working procedures. Once the protocol is ready, then you will submit it for peer review. Now, generally, the peer review is done by the Institutional Review Board. Uh, why is a peer review important? Uh, peer review is important because if there are any flaws in your design, then they can be corrected at this very stage itself. Now, imagine if you have completed the entire study, and at the time of analysis, you find that there is a flaw, then you have to start all over again, you're back to square one. So it's better to get your paper, your protocol peer reviewed at this stage. And many a times some of the manuscripts which you submit to journals, they even ask for the protocol. So it's important that you keep your protocol with you during submission. Now, sometimes some of the institutes also like to perform a pilot study before they start the main project. Now, pilot study is something like a short test run, like when you are trying to buy a new car, uh, you always do a test drive just to find 
figure out whether it suits your uh, requirements, whether there are any flaws in it. Likewise, a pilot study also is done to find out the flaws and to check the practicality of the study and whether uh, it's going to be useful in the future. And it also helps you to understand uh, the uh, in terms of time and money that will might be required for the main study. Also remember that the final version of the protocol should be agreed upon by all the concerned people before the actual trial begins. So now coming to the main study, as I said, the first step is to select the population. Now the population is the reference population and the experimental population. So here in this diagram, you can see that the bigger cloud, the blue colored cloud refers to the main population, the reference population or the target population, the population that I am going to study. So it is the population to which the findings of the trial, if found successful, are expected to be applicable. Now this population can be a broad-based population, like a population of the entire country or the entire city, or it can be geographically limited to maybe the coastal areas of the country or to the hilly areas of the country. It can be limited to persons of specific age, gender, occupation, or even social groups. Now, from this blue cloud, if we see, we find that inside we have the purple cloud. So this is a part of the target population. So this will be the sample population or the study population. So this is the population will be, which will be participating in the study. So it is derived from the reference population and this should be randomly chosen from the reference population. And it should have the same characteristics as the target population and remember that it should be stable population that is it should not be a migratory population that you lose them to follow up and then you set your exclusion criteria and your inclusion criteria so the participant criteria will be they must give informed consent only after that they will be eligible for the study secondly they should be representative of the population and they should be eligible for the trial so eligible means suppose you are studying a new drug for the treatment of anemia so they should fulfill the criteria for the definition of anemia now comes the most important step. You have selected your population. Now you have to perform randomization. So randomization is the cornerstone of RCT. And this is what makes these studies robust. A statistical procedure by which the participants will be randomly grouped into two groups, that is the study group and the control group. And it is done in such a way that every individual gets an equal chance of being allocated into any of the two groups. They can either go to study group, they can either go to control group. We don't know which group they will go to. And this is done only after the participant has entered the study. That is, the participant has given the consent. And the aim of randomization is to eliminate bias and to allow comparability of both the groups. This randomization has to be concealed from the investigator and randomization as a result guarantees that statistical tests of significance will be valid. So how do we do the randomization? Now, randomization generally follows these two techniques. One is the block randomization, which we generally follow commonly. And the other is the stratified sampling. So in block randomization, we have the sample population. Now, the sample population is then divided into blocks. Now, here in this figure, you can see blocks of six people, six participants. We can have blocks of 10 participants, 15 participants, depending upon the initial sample size. And then from each block, we are going to take our study group and our control group. Then block two, study group, control group. Like this, we will be forming the study group and the control group. In stratified sampling, the initial sample population can have different types of patients. Like for example, we have a heart failure uh, study. So in the heart failure, we can have patients of mild heart failure, moderate heart failure, severe heart failure. So if we are checking the treatment of, I mean, checking the, uh, some drug for the treatment of heart failure, then the outcome of uh, treatment on a, mod, uh, on a mild type of uh, heart failure cannot be compared with that of a severe heart failure. So initially we will be stratifying this population, this sample into three categories, that is mild, moderate, and severe. And then we will be actually doing the randomization. So first stratification and then randomization. So block randomization is appropriate for smaller trials to ensure equal numbers in each group and stratified randomization is done so that the confounding factor is more evenly distributed between the two groups and in this case it was the various degrees of existing cardiac failure. Now coming to manipulation. Now manipulation basically means intervention. So a deliberate application or withdrawal. Withdrawal means if the patient is smoking or takes alcohol, so we will be withdrawing that and see what is the outcome. So it is the application of withdrawal of the suspected causal factor as laid down in the protocol. And then manipulation creates an independent variable. Independent variable means cause, whose effect is then determined by the measurement of the final outcome. Final outcome is the dependent variable. So dependent variable is the outcome. The outcome can be in the form of incidence of disease, the survival time, then recovery period, 
And after that, the last step would be follow up. These patients will be then, both the groups will be then followed up for a considerable period of time at regular intervals, at defined intervals. Now, this interval has to be defined so that the standardization is maintained. And then this follow-up can vary from short period to many years. Now, we generally find that short period follow-up is better as compared to many years because when we do a long follow-up, we lose many of the patients. Either the patients um, lose interest, they fail to show up to our OPDs, or they migrate, they get transferred to other cities, or they may just lose interest. So this is called attrition. So what happens? The sample attrition basically refers to the dropouts, and patients may re refuse to continue with the trial, or they, they may just be lost to analysis and what happens when there is attrition now for example you have a study group which you started with maybe 20 patients and then five patients disappeared and then you are left with only 15 and in the control group you continue to have 20 patients so 20 versus 15 this skews the sample and leads to bias so obviously your outcome your calculation will be difficult and it has generally been said that if the attrition is less than 10 percent is generally does not affect the outcome but if it is more than 20 percent it can affect the outcome so then you may even have to abandon the entire study now in the RCT, what do you do you do you keep the patients uh, in the study or you remove the patients now in this uh, our city the analysis must include an unbiased comparison of the groups produced by the process of randomization and this is known as analysis of intention to treat because initially when you included them in the group you had an intention to treat so you will keep them in the group and keep the dropouts in the trial if even if it is only for outcome measurement Lastly, assessment. So this is the final step in the outcome of a trial. This mm. outcome can be a positive outcome or it can be a negative outcome. So you have to mention all this. Positive outcome can be in the form of reduced incidence of disease, reduced severity of disease, or even reduced cost of treatment. Negative outcome can be an adverse effect, severity, frequency of side effects, some complications that might occur in the patient, or even lastly, death of the patient. Now, Coming to the consort guidelines, uh, nowadays we are following the consort guidelines, which are uh, very easily available on the website. This is the consolidated uh, standard of uh, reporting trials, and there is generally a list of 25 item checklist. Uh, it is an exhaustive checklist. I haven't included all of them, but the broad headings are title and abstract, introduction, methods, results, discussion, and other information. In the other information, you have to mention whether your trial was registered with the registry and what is the registration number. Uh, in our country, ICMR has a trial registry and we generally like to register before we start the project, we generally like to register our uh, trials with the ICMR register. Then we have a consort flow diagram, which gives us a step-by-step -step, uh, way of uh, going about with the study. And uh, that's it. Um, the documents uh, which need to be submitted to the uh, institutional review board, you have to submit the trial protocol. Then you have to submit the consent form, the written informed consent form that you will be taking from the patients, the subject recruitment procedure, the written information which you will be providing to your participants, the investigators brochure and availability safety information, and also information if any payment or any compensation you will be giving to the patients, then information regarding that as well. And that brings us to the end of this uh, topic. Uh, very much uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shashwati. It was a very informative and a crisp talk. Now I request the learned experts to give their valuable in inputs. Dr. Arup Kumar Maji, sir. First of all, I must uh, congratulate and uh, thank uh, uh, the uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Saswati, uh, really she has beautifully presented and given the importance of the different studies. But one thing is to remember that all the studies are uh, very important from starting from the metallicity also to the case report. Because case report is very important for the uh, juniors also. And now the advantage is that uh, there are so many and the post, in the postgraduate, the, uh, there are so many postgraduates now and every postgraduate should know the how to write the thesis. So the in the medical college and hospitals where there are uh, PG courses and also the DNB courses. So there are clinical materials are not lacking as uh, importantly stated uh, by uh, Dr. Kunar also clinical materials also. So how to write a paper that is that is very important and that has been elaborated uh, described by the Sriti, Sriti Agarwal. I think the Saraswati has uh, everything has, has pointed out and one important thing is that 
when you want to you want to start a randomized control trial it is a trial you we must remember that you have to register at the city ctri registration of the india otherwise no international journal will accept accept it i must thank and congratulate uh, uh, our dr sabna gupta he has led the innovative idea of the jubo isopar medicinal lipna many a few months you are saying and i think we are waiting uh, for in san op in our uh, last uh, coming year so that the also post graduates can be involved post graduates are there and uh, both of them has said actually the what is imrad and the consort 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 trial almost all the both the things are same and imrad we follow in our in our college and consort trial uh, dr saswati has and details she has, has said i also uh, thanks to uh, madam sipati are you actually the mentor of all of the research work to a mentor of the research and i used to say only 15 minutes presentation how much i i when i was the chief editor of the journal for 7 year only 15 minutes presentation he give you a tutorial and for how many months and how to work and how much uh, person has to given for the, the for, for 15 minutes presentation and see from the very beginning as as kid and also to gangadas sau and the really effort doctor uh, uh, our uh, the, the, here is the doctor bobita bobita shukla also uh, she is trying this effort doctor aritu also i am not going to discuss more but uh, there are two or topics and if i get at the end i will uh, more give the input, inputs uh, my my experience of uh, so many my i have actually last year retired my 75 pg uh, i will have to guide the thesis and the synopsis everything and teachers should be uh, trained actually for that teachers should be trained and for this i also inform you though my i only my in my book i have written a chapter it was on the five four years back on the uh, my book in my book the teacher research how to write in research but because when we have heard uh, learned uh, from any conference i have seen is both outside or my and for the teacher so how to simplify and today's lecture is actually uh, presentation has been going very simplified way of the two uh, two uh, presenter is there and uh, dr jena and dr ankita uh, so i will add and if there is scope i will uh, comment otherwise the other uh, our coach or person are there they will comment thank you thank you <laughs> start thank you. We'll, we'll go to the thank next thank you very much sir Dr. Meena Samant, ma'am. Yeah, congratulations, Dr. Saswati and also Smriti. Both the talks have been really excellent, and your slides were also very good. And uh, really, we do know that uh, uh, RCTs are considered the gold standard, especially in finding out the effects. They are very. They have to plan very meticulously. Like you said, at the very initial point only, you have to, you know, plan your study well, get it reviewed. Otherwise, because once the study is done, you cannot do anything about it except, uh, you know, cooking maybe. So that's a very good uh, idea. And but then we also know that uh, uh, there are many other kinds of studies, and uh, depending on what we are trying to find out, we have different kinds of studies. Uh, so uh, not that rct would not uh, be suitable for all those um, we are trying to find out but definitely for cause effect or preventive and all those things it, it, it is the gold standard and uh, you pointed out really how to you know avoid the bias and the confoundings and all that uh, so i think we uh, uh, congratulations once again and i think we should i would also like to you know not uh, you know take away the time of other speakers because i know they're important topics but i must you know thank dr satna gupta the whole team of uh, gorakhpur for planning this and also making me a part of this very important webinar thank you, thank you very much ma'am our next peer expert dr shashikala kola ma'am we request you for some valuable inputs ma'am dr shashi kola kola dr shashi kala kola ma'am i think she is not here dr lavina chobe ma'am shashi ma'am is there yeah. ah, yeah. she is muted. muted muted please unmute uh, dr shashi kola please unmute ma'am are you yeah, there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
again we can go ahead. Uh, so go we can hear after talk. the next okay, speaker. Yes, yes, for the talks. Yeah. Yeah. For the other talk, yeah. Yes. Sir. Our second talk is on art of converting mm -hmm. data into research paper. The speaker is Dr. Sobhagi Kumar Jena. Sir is Professor NHOD Ames Bhuvaneshwar. He has published 55 research papers and presented 85 papers. He is in the editorial board member and um, he is ICMR funded extramural projects, etc. He's uh, running. An area of interest are gynecological oncology, MIMIGS, and high risk pregnancy. Sir, please begin your talk. Dr. Sobhagi Kumar Jena, sir. He's very much yeah. over here, I think. Yeah. Good evening, madam. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, can I share my slide? Yes, yes, yes please. Sir. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Light is not visible. Yes. Sir, it will come. So, Namaskar to all the dignitaries, my respected teachers, seniors, colleagues, and dear friends. So, again, blessings from Lord Jagannath and greetings from my institute, that is James Bhuvaneswar. And let me appreciate, acknowledge, and declare something. First appreciation goes to our respected Sindhu Madam, actually. All of us know how knowledge is madam is and see how, how much she is interested actually everywhere now in relation to tuberculosis in genital tract, this first reference comes is the Tripathi and Tripathi anywhere. All of us know that actually. And madam was my teacher, teacher of my teachers and now teacher of my students also actually, grand teacher. Thank you madam very much. and. Anytime, wherever I'll meet any Thank conference you. or any works, workshop, always Madam will ask, try yeah. to publish, try to do research. It is her constant encouragement that gives me a impetus and that I try to inculcate among my students. Actually. Then the next acknowledgement is to Sadhana Gupta Madam and the team Gorakhpur. Thank you very much Madam for giving this opportunity. I don't think I am the right person for this topic. I tried my best actually keeping your words in mind that our objective of this presentation is to stimulate the young minds actually. That is what you told me in our conversation. So let us stimulate the young minds. So that is my basic objective. Then let me declare that I don't have any conflict of interest in this presentation. So outline of my presentation will be what is data, how to acquire the data and storage and management briefly, then what is research, why to do is research and how to convert actually whatever the minimum experience I have, how to convert the data to a research paper. And I will share as Madam has, Sadhana Madam has requested, I will share our experience, how we set our data to research paper, then summary and conclusion. So to introduce all of not there are so many things has been told by now actually. Without data, we all know that without data, there is no new knowledge is generated. And therefore, it is important to become excellent at collecting, collecting and correctly interpreting the data. The first thing is data actually. So whatever that, if you collect the data properly, try to collect the data properly and analyze or interpret that properly, then there will be no issue in relation to writing a research paper. So all of us know that what is data, data facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. And data is not same as information because information is classified or organized data actually. And that has some meaningful values for the user. Data might not give a meaningful value, but information should have a meaningful value. And what is more important here is the process data. So process data, I mean that that should be accurate data. Don't manipulate the data. Completeness of the data and timeliness of the data. So data is a little bit different than the information. And 
what is our role is from that data we have to bring out some information and to get a good quality information because that is our aim of the research to have a good quality information we have to first have a good quality data then sources of data all of us know that there are non public or public in the non public there are clinical study reports individual patient data and in public there are journal articles conference abstracts trial registrations and regulatory informations and method of data collection either may be a primary source or it is a secondary source in primary source from observation from interview or from questionnaire as a male questionnaire or different type of interview that is structured or unstructured and from secondary data collection we may take from different sources from the government sources to other case records also then there is a paradigm shift in the method of data collection when we were students what we are doing now what people are doing and what are the softwares available so it was paper data collection now it is computerized data collection and commonest few commonest forms what you are using is google forms or we are using in ms excel whatever it has been collected and by but i will suggest better will be a planned database actually in the next one to two slides i will share this is the database which we in aims bhubaneswar with the gynecological oncology team has created actually to collect the data for gynecological malignancy the brain this is the brain child of one of our additional professor in the oncology surgery department that is dr dilip kumar moduli so this is the data collection format we have prepared that is the it is ebo that is evidence based oncology we have a username and password and you can see how many sub headings are there for correct data collection and next is also this is just i have given two three screenshots evaluation of the patient to participation for diagnosis new adjuvant chemotherapy ipd surgery all this data in detail you are collecting so any time in future if you want to do any research from this actually it will not be so easy difficult actually so my aim of putting this data two slides was data collection should be complete in all aspects then data storage either previously we are doing that type of storage of records now it is electronic data storage and here there are that some guidelines that how many years at least the data what we have collected should be stored if it is a gene therapy or significant research it should be permanent if it is high risk carcinogens radioactive or dangerous drug research it should be around 50 years clinical trial for 15 years research involving the young people seven years or until younger subject turns 25 years non interventional studies for seven years and quality assurance data at least for one year then the data there is no depth of data actually there are big data everywhere actually but what is important is collect it properly store it properly and it analyze it properly and application of this data in healthcare is one of these there are so many applications one of the important application is to doing medical research then coming to that second part is converting this data to research actually to write a paper or what is it first thing is to plan it properly and you can plan if you are interested only then once your planning is done you can collect then process then publish once you have analyzed then publish preserve and reuse again for secondary analysis you can use it then the collection of data depends whether you are planning a retrospective study or prospective study in prospective study we can plan properly what are the data so you want but in retrospective sometimes you have to collect the data that is it might not be complete in all aspects then this hierarchy of evidence i think repeatedly has been told by my previous speakers though the systematic review or meta analysis are in highest level actually in the pyramid but my point here is always all the people cannot start with a systematic review or meta analysis we should start somewhere else actually i completely agree with dr maj sir that uh, be it a case report be it a retrospective analysis we should start somewhere but we should show your interest 
and we should start it properly. Then research, all of us know that what is research? Research is the attempt to derive generalizable new knowledge that has been emphasized by Hiralal Kunar sir, or to confirm or refute the existing knowledge. Try to get a new knowledge or confirm or refute the existing knowledge. It is addressed clearly by clear defined questions or hypotheses, and it goes by rigorous scientific methods, systematic scientific methods. So when you are trying to convert a data to a research, actually, you should have a clear cut research question, be it a prospective or retrospective study. And research question try to make more specific as specific as possible, actually, from a broad heading to go to a specific area. And try to have a strong or good research question, which the characteristics are feasible, specific, focused, researchable, relevant and original actually. Once you have a good research question, then we can plan the next step. Then the important question is why actually we have the data, then why to convert to a research paper actually. There are n number of that is indications or causes why to do a research from data to research paper actually. So first will be the clarify your goals that is reviewing or interpreting your data. The next will be important feedback on the validity of your research approach. Then try to communicate the information, what information you have actually, it will help others also. It can be used in a larger context. And to understand a research question, and most important thing is somewhat, already it was told actually, it is required for advancing your career. But in this point, I just want to highlight for the career, progress only. If you are really not interested, I think we should not do a research actually. If you want to get involved and you should have, you have to have that interest also. Then you can be expert once you have the publications. And once you have these research papers, you might get more funds actually, more publications and you might get more funds. Then all of us know that medical science consists of a large degree of discussion and exchange of experience and observation. This is one me method actually. So this publication or preparing a paper gives at least two important things. One is recognition and second is helps us for our career progression. Then steps of converting are define the topic, whether it is a perspective or a retrospective, study the literature, go thoroughly study the literature, write the introduction, give a structure to a paper, Whatever the experiments or results or discussion, you have clearly describe it and conclude with a direction for the future work and review. And finally, once you have prepared a paper and submit it. So write the already my first speaker, our first speaker has presented, write the abstract, then title, see the similar works, introduction, then in the, that format you prepare. Once you have analyzed data and clear cut focus research question. Then most important part is try to have a mentor actually. Because everything is not possible by everyone. So if you are a lucky enough like me, you can have a mentor like my teacher, Professor Gangadhar Thausar, who has handled me actually to this type of work actually. So I request and I suggest that try to have actually whomever you have faith or belief try to have a mentor to help you in all this process actually. Then the topic was the act of converting. I want to say that without science, this art is not possible. Though writing is an art, you should have some science and sometimes you should use some money also. Commerce is also important because you have to take training, you have to go to somewhere, you have to attend the conference. So for converting a data to a research course in both art, science and commerce are important. The net last three slides actually, all of us know that this was the beginning. This professor uh, Robson actually, who was that uh, 10 group classification. And this was a meeting which we attended. These two people here below is from CNC Bellore actually. We had a meeting in relation to Robson's classifications. And that was, that is the, to develop a Indian bath network it, with the UK people actually. Then there we presented our Ames Bhuvan search data. That was a retrospective data of Caesarean section from March to August in this 10 group headings actually. 
So we have a discussion, not only in Subhuban, or other institutes from different parts of the country also presented, but this was a retrospective data. We started there where, then we progressed two, three meetings we had. Then you see, this is the outcome. Recently, I received a mail from Dr. Santos from CNC below that, that whatever data we have discussed in that meeting, they want to publish a paper. So uh, that is in the pipeline. And this is my reply to it because in our institute, we have to take IEC approval, whether it is whatever data sharing also we are doing, we have to take uh, approval from the research cell and institute ethic committee. If they are giving that plan, we'll take the permission and share the data and we we'll analyze and the outcome will be a publication actually. So from data to publication actually, this is our example in relation to 10 group classifications of Robson's criteria. So to summarize at last, you should have an interest. If you are not really interested in research, I will rather suggest not to go for it, actually. And plan it properly. If you have interest, plan it properly. Collect. Data collection, storage, and analysis is most important part. If you have collected data thoroughly, keeping everything in mind, then there will be no difficulty. Then have a clear-cut, valid, strong research question in mind. Analyze the data in relation to that. Prepare your manuscript. Then once you have been prepared, Review, revise, and opinion. What that I mean means review yourself. Again, revise according to the suggestion and take the opinion of your peer groups actually. Let them read, let them give their suggestions. Accordingly, you change it and repeat these cycles. Then finally, once you are preparing that manuscript, we have to submit to the appropriate journal for publication. So to conclude, just two words, have an idea and work with the idea. So have an idea collect the data, try to convert it and work with the idea. That idea means you should have an interest, you should have a dedication, you should have enhance your knowledge in relation to this and you should have a correct attitude to work for it. Have an idea and work with the idea. And thank you very much for the patience hearing and thank you Sadhana Madam for giving me this year opportunity to share my thoughts. Thank you, Dr. Jena. It was really an impressive talk from you. And now I request the experts to give their valuable inputs and remarks. Sir, Dr. Arup Kumar Maji, sir. Dr. Meena Samant, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Sabhagya, for sharing your uh, inputs. And uh, really, you highlighted that how important data collection and analysis is. And I think uh, the technology has made life quite easy. Now, there are certain apps. There are, there's, uh, now younger generation is here. I mean, they are more apt, they are more friendly at, um, working with that. There is SPSS, then there is GMOV, and all those, they can, you know, help. Because once you've got data, you've collected a lot of it, but how to make sense out of it? They may be, you know, uh, processing that data. Uh, there may be duplication. Uh, there may be incomplete data. There may be irrelevant data and all that. Once it's done, once that processing is done, then the computer does a lot of, uh, you know, uh, help for you, does a lot of work for you and makes your life much easy. So we should also get friendly and adapt ourselves to these app apps so that uh, our work becomes easier for us and a very tough job of, you know, people say that uh, analyzing, interpreting, that takes a lot of time. And I think we can uh, become more expert in that taking help of technology. Thank you. Uh, really, uh, in fact, I have, uh, I know Professor uh, Jana, Jana from the last few decades. And I am really impressed with how he has improved himself, also his students and the colleagues and his institution last few de decades. Because, and he's, uh, uh, he's, uh, you revise the data, collect the data, review the data, and analyze that data, the submission. Dr. Minan Samant has say, said uh, correctly that that is the very important uh, to collect the data, everything okay. And that is very important. Dr. Jenna has uh, shown that they, they have collected the, uh, according to the options criteria. Then you will convert, convert, uh, convert and analyze and, and the paper and they and the, then uh, submission. So that is very important uh, today. Dr. Jenna really 
uh, you have presented very very well uh, your paper we have learned uh, many things and i think many histories are we learned from you the collection of the data and made it into the uh, uh, paper and submission thank you thank you dr uh, thank, thank you sir dr okay. shashi is there dr Dok- shashi is there yes sir uh, dr hiralal konar also wanted to say something uh, with permission i am listening to all of us uh, and that the speakers and that of the seniors professor tripathi professor president dr sahu professor sahu and uh, professor maji also the bottom line is this for any research we should be very genuine to our work we must be dedicated sincere and devote time research should not be in a way of casual doing something for the purpose of getting some promotion or some uh, Uh, passing the examination that does not serve the purpose <laughs> rather putting wrong information wrong result that misguides the workers that this study has said something like this so uh, bottom line is this research must be genuine in all aspect that of the study design starting from data collection that shobhagya has nicely elaborated <clears throat> so this the bottom line this seminar this webinar i believe all of us really enormously benefited with this thanks Again, so thank you, thank you, sir. Madam so, Dr. Shashi Kala. Sasi and Lavina yeah. both are there, and I think Sasi for this comment and Lavina for after the last talk. So Sasi, please. Sir. Yes. Dr. Shashi Kala Kula, ma'am, we would like to have your expert comments. Unmute, unmute, Shashi, uh, Sasi, yeah. and yes. <coughs> Yes, madam. Yes, ma'am. I would like to yes, have ma'am. your expert comments. Yes, Dr. Shashi Kala, ma'am. I think the name is ma'am incorrect. Ah, Lavina is there. Name is incorrect. Yeah, Sh- Dr. Shashi is not there. Okay. That's Dr. Lavina. <laughs> Dr. Lavina, yes, Lavina. Okay, ma'am. I'm sorry, Dr. Lavina Chobe, ma'am. Please. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'll be very brief. Um. according to my opinion the backbone of any research is data if if anything has to be done really sincerely really honestly it has to be during the data collection if that is not done properly then the results are not appropriate or if you get some inappropriate result you may not be able to justify it and then going back again to data collection is a very difficult thing to do so data collection is the most important thing and i will be i will not take much time and maybe uh, after the next speaker we can again have another opinion thank you ma'am <clears throat> thank you very much ma'am our next talk is on art of making good case report and the speaker is dr ankita she is associate professor in brd medical college gorakhpur she is a member of various societies in gorakhpur she has many publications in natural in national and international journals and she has been invited as faculty in various conferences and has special interest in reproductive medicine gynae endoscopy and high risk pregnancy yes dr ankita please begin your talk dr ankita gupta Dr. Ankita, are you there? Yeah, she she is. She is there. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Ritu Ma'am, for your kind words. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, my slides are visible or not, Ma'am? Yes, it is visible. Um, It is visible. Yes, please carry on. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, especially Dr. Sadhana Gupta, ma'am. Make it full screen. Make full screen. I would like to thank Dr. Sadhana Gupta, ma'am, for providing me this opportunity and making me a part of this great webinar. So, what is a case report? Case reports are the scientific observations 
that are carefully documented so that they may be a valuable education and a research resource it is a narrative in professional literature that identifies a single incidents and discuss pertinent factors related to the patient such as symptoms sign diagnosis treatment follow up and interpretation of an individual patient so uh, the case report is the first step in the medical literature writing uh, when we see hierarchy of evidence the case reports are occupy a low place when compared to the systemic reviews meta analysis and randomized control trial but it is still important for junior residents to start their medical writing so next question is what kind of cases should be reported the rare diseases should be reported and a well known disease with a unique and unusual presentation should be reported or the reports or the cases which illustrate a new principle or theory should be reported or the cases which raise questions regarding the current theory <clears> or <throat> practice should be reported or some particular adverse or the beneficial response to treatments should also be reported or if there is an unusual combination of con conditions or events that cause confusions can be reported so what are the components of case report or what is the structure of case report a case report must include abstract with a few keywords it includes introduction case history or the description literature review in short discussion conclusion recommendations reference and lesions so what are the essentials in writing a case report anonymize the patient please do not reveal the identity of the patient omit non essential personal details of the patient tabulation of results are of great help photos of clinical signs and diagnostic studies are invaluable so please make it a habit to click pictures while operating or examining patients when you find something unusual uh, these photos are clicked especially for the viewers of this webinar uh this pictures have been taken by the resident last sunday this patient has been referred to us uh, by uh, they were a private hospitals as placenta previa and found to be as primary abdominal pregnancy this case was operated by me last sunday and the patient as well as her baby is doing well in the ward and this these photos are taken by me uh, two days before uh, one of my colleagues dr ruma sarkar was the operating surgeon she called me come ankita and see the patient and i was uh, very happy to see the case and spontaneously spontaneously clicked this photograph and waiting for the histopathology to come the idea is make it a habit of taking photographs while you are seeing something unusual and next is title title should be concise and informative always avoid redundant or the extra word in including in the title so the abstract or the first section should be of uh, less the 150 or the 200 word as per the rcog guidelines uh, abstract should be brief and self sufficient it quickly scans the content of paper it should be unstructured unlike the that of the original articles which uh, have the subheadings like that of the aim methodology result conclusion etc uh, abstract should be written in the paragraph form while we are uh, writing a case report introduction introduction should be concise and attract the reader's attention it should emphasize the uniqueness of the case and how the case contributes to the existing literature the case description or the case report it must ensure the confidentiality of the patient the patient demographics such as the age and gender are occasionally race and occupation are referred to in the first sentence in order to reduce the possibility of the identifying the patient the patient's initial date of birth and other identifiers such as the hospital number must not be included in the case report 
describe the current medical condition and medical history including family history in the chronological order the history must include presenting features past medical history social and the family history and drug history in short it should incorporate the medical ex physical examination and investigations like that of the ultrasound imaging laboratory findings in histopathology should be included a differential diagnosis must be written and finally the treatment outcome and role follow up must be mentioned in the case report photographs and radiographs must be included as it increase the attractiveness of your case report all the negative important findings should not also be provided in the last but the author's own interpretation or inference should be avoided in the main body of the case report tables and figures should be used to reveal the chronological findings literature review must be made the 3s for the literature review is search sort as per your need and summarize try to make it a note of you Uh, research a permit uh, permit is a research engine which helps you in searching quality of the articles the discussion it is the most important section of the case report and it is most difficult to write it summarizes the essential features and compare the case report with the literature what has already been known discussion explain the rationale of the report in the case it state the lessons learned from the case report and how things can be managed differently in a similar situation or in similar things so uh, lastly the conclusion should be based on the evidence or the reviewed in the discussion section a concise statement of the lesson to be learned from the case could be stated with the justifiable evidence based recommendations the section must not exceed more than one paragraph legends should be included that is the proper explanation of the figures acknowledgement in this section you can acknowledgement those people who helped you in making your case reports a uh, informed written consent must be obtained by the patient some generals have their own consent forms which must be used regardless of the informed consent you have already obtained a rarely in cases of case report additional approval from the institutional review board or the ethics committee may be required the reference the reference which are the relevant references should be quoted the reference should provide additional information to the readers which are interested in reading more detail a for case report uh, up to 15 references can be quoted it can be written in either in the vancouver style or the harvard style after making a case report submission to a scientific journal is uh, required to strictly follow the author guidelines and journal submission requirements when writing and submitting your case report to a scientific journal prior to submission arrange the necessary documents as per the checklist in and save it in the folder on your desktop the first is the covering letter as the smriti mam well said then the title page copyright form manuscript tables and figure and lastly the consent forms are attached coming to the award for the publication ethics all of us should follow the publication ethics informed consent should be taken and confidentiality of the data should be maintained there should not be any falsification or fabrication of the data and no simultaneous or the duplication publication to any journal plagiarism should be avoided more than 10% of the plagiarism is not allowed it nowadays plagiarism is checked by the plagiarism detection software around 10% is allowed similarity versus plagiarism is to be checked plagiarism can be of ideas text figures design or the data similarity is something that is overlapping or the matching of the text scientific terminology names of the procedure techniques may be considered as the similarities so how to avoid plagiarism avoid copy pasting from the text 
spend more time to express the words in your language acknowledge the source from where you have cited cite the references make use of the software tools like the turnitin or uh, or to avoid the plagiarism once article has been submitted and certain queries has been sent to you by the editor try to respond each point made by each reviewer point wise make a table in the number form then uh, according to the comment and location of a page number response is given in the point wise or the comment wise manner a word about the case series the case series lacks clear definition more than four case reports and less than 10 cases are usually reported as the case series the cases which common characteristics clinically or related with pathophysiology or therapy are reported no research questions are is there in the case report or the series to sum up read articles carefully discuss it with other authors make writing a habit because practice makes one perfect try avoid lo using long phrases always use simple words to make your case report avoid repetition of word and sentences respect the word length many journals have specific requirements for word length for different types of articles look for the journal that have issued call for papers they are because they are more likely to look upon what any work with the kindness so a case report may be the beginning of a glorious and successful career in medical writing so please do report ca your cases thank you yeah, correctly correctly dr rogida uh, has beautiful presentation you have covered all the things in fact the how to write the content of a case report what is plagiarism and how to submit what is the problem and uh, i have said also that at the very beginning that the case report in fact it is the very important if you if you think about the still levinson syndrome uh, today polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome there are so many papers so many uh, rct like that inherited you know, bad management and also the, but only few cases in you know, 1935 which was read the case report and also you think in 1876 also there is a, a hysterectomy hysterectomy poros uh, seizure and section you did the, that is the only case report and that is the remarkable case report and that is that is all the studies are now based on the poros in 1876 egyptian uh, poros so case report is very important the two things because particularly for the beginning and the younger they will they will be very get interested how to uh, do the do the research uh, and and second thing is it will it is the basis of the future larger study that because the basically the three type of study one is the experimental study mainly is the rct and second is the observational study that from parts of three study and third is the that is the descriptive study the case report and case series and if any of the uh, younger teacher says don't write the case report it will not be it will be not be validated by the insa and like that but case report is very very important thank you uh, dr sadhana again you have included the case report in this students discussion but it is not discussed i have i cannot remember where it has been discussed to you i cannot remember the very very uh, subject you have incorporated the two days discussion and so the gorakhpur team and the dr sadhana gupta and dr ankita for this presentation thank you all i think there are uh, so thank many thank you expert thank you comment. sir for your appreciation dr lavina is with us uh, you dr lavina and dr sasi थिंकिंग and uh, the thing is that uh, for case reports yes there is a lot of um, you know stigma attached to that uh, journals are not accepting case reports now but i feel case reports are more interesting to read i always go in for the case reports first you know all those pictures and everything they really attract me you know you give me one original paper and one case report i'll read the case report first so um yes you can choose your journal where you want to publish the case report 
and there's just one thing about a case report that i would like to say is that every case is worth reporting especially those cases coming in medical colleges and almost all cases you know we 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 indians we know we have an opd of maybe 50 100 and um, we get such good cases the only thing is we don't have time to actually find out what is so interesting about those cases you know once you put your mind to it you can really find it out and then you can publish that case accordingly you just have to you know make a little bit of adjustment in which direction you are publishing the case and always keep a camera handy whether it's your phone whether it's everything but always keep a camera handy you know you can always take a selfie and then you can always take a case report picture and if you have it you can always publish it uh informed consent from the patient is uh, very much necessary before you are reporting don't report without taking her permission or his permission that is more important so thank you so much dr sadhna ma'am thank you so much dr babita and uh, thank you so much organizers and um, all my uh, colleagues who have been here it's been a wonderful cm it's been a wonderful webinar i really didn't think that this subject could be made so interesting um for that i have dr sadhna to thank thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you ma'am hiralal corner your comment sasi is there dr hiralal corner right. your comment yes uh, it is again a most wonderful evening to attend i think connection is team led by dr sadhna gupta and her colleagues with the help of the isoprab leaders professor tripathi professor sau dr uh, professor maji all this is really really starting from that of the uh, um, the case, case study presenting rct randomized control trial and uh, the all the uh, case reports even we have enjoyed very much I think sir has lost connection or something. Yes. Yeah. Am, am I am, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes. 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 Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Very much audible. I, audio is gone. Anyhow, uh, we have enjoyed very much. Only thing, uh, one issue that I like to say to uh, our last speaker, Dr. Ankita, she has added that yes, documentation is very important, especially for the case report. I was talking to you in the beginning that there is one problem if the SSR bias. Uh, it happens uh, very rarely but it may happen i tell you one event one of our study uh, good many workers good many authors were there there was a problem with this uh, ssr bias ssr reported that there was a short brief case presentation and it was reported that we believe we don't believe this case this case presentation was so extremely rare we don't believe the case we it was supported by the documentations of the video and the photographs till then question was there we don't believe this case then what to do really we were wondering what next fortunately i, I don't know how it happens but though it is rare it depends on the assessor's experience again to add to our uh, information ultimately the case when it was done it came to the all the state and the national newspapers we had the photography of that we had the photocopy of the paper also we submitted all the paper ultimately it was all accepted so uh, there are rare situations that might happen but all the speakers have done wonderful job we have enjoyed i believe it is very informative on behalf of this educational session done by isoprab dr sadhana gupta i thank you all the team one second and the organizers thank you, thank you all sir. the speakers and the uh, the chair persons and all Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Very Now happy I... to see that Isopar is vibrating with our yeah, national leader. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely, national leader. And we Great. expect many things from Dr. Sadhana Gupta. <laughs> yes, yes. She, she has done, done, and she and her team have done wonderful yeah. job today. She <laughs> always does this. She always does this. All the educational programs. And please program. involve um, yeah. many postgraduates, two or three postgraduates, and they are understanding. Yes. And this is very important topic. you have to say thank you yeah thank, thank you. you all thank you very much sir now i request our own dr sadhna gupta ma'am and dr reena shrivastava ma'am to give their concluding remarks ramkita ji reena ji then i will say because <laughs> <laughs> uh 
I think uh, the things, the subject has brought a wonderful evening today. I was just thinking it might be a bit, uh, say, boring because the research topic and teaching I have been doing, done, I have done for 35 years, uh, going through all their uh, research work and thesis of the students. Students are mostly not interested, uh, maybe because of the load of the work they are having. The PGs, I had to make them work, make them do the research, make them write papers. Every before examination, every student was made to uh, publish a uh, article, uh, go for poster presentation. Everything was done, but then it was it was the, the rule uh, on their heads. Only then they were doing that. And similarly, I thought this uh, evening, what is going to happen? Let us see. But the speakers have made it so interesting and so wonderful. Uh, I can't. I couldn't imagine. And I'm thankful to all of you. Thank you, Sadna. And all the teachers over here, all the speakers over here, all the faculty who have made the evening so wonderful. And what uh, important thing, the only thing I would like to say, everything has been all, all, almost said. But the only thing is today, what prescription we are writing, it is on the basis of evidence. Some, someone has given some evidence and that has been meta-analyzed. So if nobody is going for a research properly, what the... Um, trend is nowadays people don't want to go for research they don't want to work for it the thing is have a computer in your clinical chamber put the records put the things over there and one fine evening when you think of something unusual when you think of something different you can pick out those cases and make a case record just like a data collection and then even uh, a, a prospective or a, a, this thing uh, studies uh, it is not always necessary to do a pros prospective study. You can go for um, the uh, records you are having and you can bring out with some evidences. So evidence is important for that research is important for the, that data collection is important. And uh, I think uh, everybody has got something in their mind. How is this case happening? How is this uh, drug uh, uh, doing well? How that patient is not responding? There are, there's a lot of variety in the clinical research and we as Indians have got a lot of variety of cases just now shown by Ankita, what a beautiful uh, picture of that case. So uh, the only thing I used to say to my students and if, whenever there was a, a different case, I used to tell them, take a picture, take a picture immediately, Put, uh, take the case sheet, bring it to me, I'll hel help you. And the important thing, what is new? and have a mentor. These two things are very, very important to go for a research because anyone who is a beginner will not be able to comprise even if they are going through all the seminars, all the uh, studies, all the books, they need to have a mentor. So don't hitch. Anybody can help you. Any teacher in your city can help you. Any your senior can help you in bringing out a research article. And I would like more and more people to go for research, but bring out articles, bring out evidences, because today what is new it would be old tomorrow and today what disease is there tomorrow we'll be having new uh, spectrum of diseases so everybody needs uh, everybody has owes the responsibility to give their best and to bring out the research and bring out the articles maybe case case reports when i was a beginner uh, i remember just in the starting of my career I saw a prolapse which was, which was not reducible at all. And when I got in radiology done, whole of the cystocele was studded with stones. And that is why it was not reducible. Immediately it clicked to my mind. I made a research paper and it was um, uh, this thing accepted by the Foxy Journal and it was published. So it is not that difficult that uh, the uh, articles would not be accepted. They would not be uh, published. If you are uh, sincere, if you are doing good work and if you think that uh, it is different, please go for it. Please go for it. This is what I would like to um, tell to all the um, people listening over here, especially the newcomers. And thank you, Sadna, and my all best wishes for your coming elections. That is what thank we you. want from the core of our heart. <laughs> thank you. Thank that's, you. Yeah, that's great. That's great. We all the wish. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, 
Okay. I'm supposed to give. Am I audible? A little small. Yes. 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 And I always say, like it is a when we do four or five hours OPD, I say to my like all resident, even my now daughter-in-law, this is the our something laboratory. Everybody is pushing like their ideas, how patient talk, what you are seeing in the ultrasound, and you have to be alert always. So to the all the generation, like money cannot like motivate you after a five or ten years. Even a like a large load of work or hospital responsibility also don't make you motivating. But the passion for innovating thing, what the nature is revealing to us, what is going on in society, that makes you passionate, and that is the your long term motivation. Like people like Dr. Sawers and Tripathi goes on because they are observing the world. You see, it is about me. I just remember one thing uh, when I was just coming to Foxy, Dr. Some person, chairperson from Foxy, gave a data of the, this thing, adolescent awareness. So it was copied from I think West. It was around 2001 or two. So there was now boys attract you and what is your body language. So just to fulfill my responsibility, I did this survey in my call in my school. And you know, one girl from Gorakhpur school, that was army school, said, "Madam, don't embarrass me with such question. It feels my weeping." Like, like there was so much difference in the Western world, and the girls for a school who are playing and who are like a child, and that hurt me so much. Like that like was a, like a breaking of my image. How can I put such question to this girl? And that gave me the first idea to doing the adolescent awareness about the health and the sexual issue, and that got the first the Korean award and the presentation which Dr. S. N. Tripathi was missing because it hurt. so much that the western thought cannot be ours and we cannot do this crime to our adolescent girl by putting these surveys so it is my to everything when we are in hospital in ot our mind should be receptive it should be alert what people are saying what how, what they are telling to us they are telling the truth which we have to reveal to the world that will make you motivating always inspiring and profession will never bore you how so ever work you hard so this is my last way what all presenters and the chairperson make this such a good interesting thing the research is also like interesting and dr s tripathi says research is awake in night so that is the extra work you have to do but it is like a chaska if you are hooked to it you cannot escape from it so uh, thank you very much uh, for all dignitaries i really have to like choose it was a very short time frame we did this thing but the galaxy of expert and the speakers it was a real real wonderful and stimulating evening a lot of learning points for everybody yeah. and for myself so thank you once again a gratitude for being together on this uh, evening गंगाधर योर ओपिनियन my opinion yes madam is always always in that or always excellent madam madam and thanks and to isopar for which body we are together mina i learned from mina new apps are coming to help us in doing research that yeah. i did not know so sitting here till now i also learned so many things today thank you again and again amrita babita all the team and sadar Yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you. Sadhana, madam, may I uh, say few words only? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. 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 Y
she has thanked everybody this <laughs> time once <laughs> again <laughs> so abhi to maine diya hi nahi hai thanks abhi main concluding remark de i was giving concluding remark <laughs> okay okay <laughs> जॉब इज लेट इज लेट अस वर्क द टॉक सो आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरीबडी वंस अगेन to go for research so publish something i mean write something and send it to the isopor journal for publication that is my earnest request so thank you thank sadhana you. Ma'am. and my teacher my mentor sindhu madam is there and uh, what i can tell about her starting from the very day of obstetrics and gynecology i entered into the pg curriculum till today she is always after me whipping me for research publication chapter in a book so and so forth and now today i am privileged to have my student and is the professor and hod ms bhubaneswar sohagya actually uh, appreciating a teacher in a large forum i think uh, it is the one of the best certificates a teacher can get so today i am too much emotional because of him so thank you so much you keep it up do your research work and help i so far to grow so thank you everybody for giving this opportunity and i will my love and affection to everybody my respect to seniors and specially my love and affection to the members of gorakhpur and particularly to my disciple thank you very much thank you thank, thank you, you sir thank you very much sir okay thank okay. you thank you very much well yes ma'am i feel honored to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of gorakhpur isopap chapter respected chief guest sir dr gangadhar sahu honorable guest of honor Dr Vinita Das madam and special guest Dr S N Tripathi madam we are really grateful to you for all your sparing your valuable time for us and gracing this function we are all inspired by your words a big thank you to the experts Dr Hira Lal Kona Dr Abha Singh ma'am Dr Ruma Sena Dr Arup Kumar Maji Dr Meena Samant and Dr Lavina Chobe although we could not hear dr shashi kalakola next time probably uh, they their expert remarks have really enlightened us i thank and i have a deep appreciation for all the speakers who have brilliantly sp- presented their talks and so well uh, i really thank our madam dr sadhna gupta and dr reena shrivastava ma'am and would like to express my gratitude to them for being an inspiration remarkable teachers and ideal for all of us we are all happy and grateful for this successful program my hearty thanks to all the people who have contributed in this program and once again i thank each one of you thank you thank you babita for coordination and amrita for always ah uh, these two were left <laughs> <laughs> and all the speakers smriti sabagi ankita and shashwati so okay. thank you very much you really made our day and so many points where i have written down and how to make so thank you and we can say very good bye thank you bye